Hi everyone! In this video, we'll learn how to evaluate polynomials using Python. Before we get started, let's review the packages we'll use. These include matplotlib and numpy. We'll start first by defining what a polynomial is, which is a mathematical expression involving a sum of powers in one or more variables multiplied by coefficients. A polynomial can have constants, variables, and exponents, but never division by a variable. Moving on, we have a quadratic function, which is a specific form of a polynomial function with one or more variables in which the highest degree term is of the second degree. And we can see here that in our first term, in our example, we have x squared, which is a term to the second degree. And we have a variable that can be any value of the real numbers except for zero. Then we have a, in the next term, a coefficient and a variable. The way this works is we multiply the coefficient by the variable to get our value for the term. Finally, we have a constant that we add to the coefficients and variables. Based on the number of terms within the polynomial function, we have different names for them. Here in this example, we have x squared, which is a monomial, meaning there's only one term here. Next, we have x squared plus 2. This is a binomial because we have two terms. Then we have trinomial x squared plus 3x plus 2, and so on and so forth. Now that we have a definition of polynomial and quadratic function, let's evaluate a quadratic function right now. And the way that we'll do that is we are going to code out this function here as a Python function. We have x squared plus 3x plus 2. What we'll do is we are going to create a Python function starting by defining it with def, then we need to name our function. In this case, I'll call it polyfunk. Within parentheses, I need to put in the inputs. In this case, the function will only take one input x. We put a semicolon, and then once we hit enter, we'll have an indent. And what we want to do is we want to return the output of this function. And let's write it out within our code. What we're going to do is we need to type in x squared. The way that we do that in Python is we have x squared is x asterisk asterisk 2. Then we need to add 3x. We put the plus sign. Then we have 3 multiplied by x. And then finally, we have our constant where we add by 2. We have our function defined. And the way that we use it is that we type in polyfunk and we input our value. In this case, we are going to input 5 to evaluate the polynomial function when x is equal to 5. What I'm going to do is I'm going to save it into a Python variable, and I'll call it polyValue, and then I am going to print out the answer. And we can see that we have the value of our polynomial when x is equal to 5, which is 42. And we can quickly check that x squared is 25 plus 3x, 3 times 5 is 15 plus 2. And we can see on the screen that that adds up to 42. Next, let's graph this quadratic function. And we could use that using NumPy. Where we want to graph it from is from the range of negative 5 to 5. The way that we'll get these values is we are going to use the NumPy package and we are going to use a function called a range. And this will return us an array of values that we specify. So we want this range to go from negative 5 to 5. We also need to define the step or the increments of these values. In this case, the increments are going to be 0 0.01. And when I run this, we'll see that we have negative 5, then negative 4.99, all the way up to but not including 5. What we'll do here is we are going to save this ar array into a variable, and I'll call it numarray. The numarray is going to be input into the polynomial function. These are going to be our x values, and then we'll have our y values or the output from the polynomial function. I'll also save a list of polynomial values. And the way that we are going to evaluate these within Python is using a method called list comprehension. Within these two brackets, I am going to do call the poly function, and I am going to input x, 
And I want to do this for all the values in the num array. And now that we have that plotted or we have that output here, we can see that when x is equal to negative five, we input that into our polynomial function. So we have negative five squared, which is positive 25 plus three times negative five, which is negative 15 plus two. And that returns a value of 12. We have those values all saved and we can plot these out using matplotlib where x is going to be the num array and y is going to be the poly values. Let's run this. And we were able to graph out our function. And on the x-axis, we have our x values and y is the output from the polynomial function. From our graph, we can see that we have a global minimum also known as the vertex here. And we can calculate that for our quadratic function. Here we have a formula that solves for it by rearranging some of the terms where we have the second term be more specifically the coefficient in the numerator and then the coefficient for a in the denominator. And what we'll do is we'll take our quadratic function and rearrange it to solve for the global minimum. We have x squared. And since we just have x squared by itself, one is the coefficient, which we'll put in the denominator. In the numerator, we have three. And once we solve for that, we have our input of negative three over two. Once we plug it back into our function, we find the global minimum is negative one over four. We can check this within Python. What we'll do is we're going to call our polyfunk. And we can see that it indeed is the global minimum. Once we input negative three over two, we find the global minimum of negative 0.25, which is the same as negative one over four. We can also check this with our polynomial values that we calculated. The way that we'll do that is we're going to find the minimum value within our polynomial values. And we can see it's true. If we run it just by itself, it's also negative 0.25 meaning it is the lowest value within our list of values. We can also plot this out using matplotlib. We can see that we have the global minimum plotted out here. Now that we have an idea of how to evaluate quadratic functions and how to find the minimum and maximum, we are going to look at an application. And we have here an application to calculate the gas mileage for a car. Most cars get their best gas mileage when traveling at a relatively modest speed. The gas mileage known as M for a certain new car is modeled by the function mileage and the input is speed. And we have it all written out here. Negative one over 28 multiplied by speed squared plus three multiplied by the speed minus a constant of 31. When the car is traveling between 15 miles an hour and 70 miles per hour. We have our first question here that asks, what is the average gas mileage if you drive 50 miles per hour for one hour and 65 miles per hour for 30 minutes? Like before, we are going to create a, another Python function, this time for our mileage calc, and that's what I will call it. It will take one input, which is the speed, and what it will return is the value of the gas mileage given the speed. And we can test it out. If we put the gas mileage or our mileage calc here, we can ask what is the estimated gas mileage if the car is traveling for 50 miles per hour. And we can see that our gas mileage is 29.7 gallons of gas per mile. What we'll do is we are going to find the gas mileage for one hour and we'll be traveling for one hour at 50 miles per hour we need to have a fraction. So since we're traveling in total for 1.5 hours or one and a half hours, we're going to take multiply by one divided by 1.5. And then what we'll also do is we're going to add the mileage traveling at 65. And also it is going to be traveling at that speed for 30 minutes. So we need a fraction of 0.5 divided by 1.5 or the total miles per hour. And what I'll do is I'll call this average gas mileage. Once we print out the value, we can see that the average gas mileage for the trip is 24.18 gallons of gas for our trip. What we want to do next is we want to find the most efficient gas mileage. 
the higher the gas mileage, the more efficient the car drives, meaning the less gas we burn per mile driven. And like before, we are going to rearrange it. We are looking first to find the optimal speed, which is going to be our input. Then we are going to put three, which is our coefficient in the numerator. And we're going to put negative 1.1 divided by 28, which is the first term in the denominator. Once we solve for that, we find 42 miles per hour is the optimal speed. Then we find the optimal gas mileage by plugging this back into our function. What we'll do is we're going to, within our mileage cal, input 42. And we can see that the optimal speed also returns the optimal gas mileage. We were able to solve for it. Like before, we are also going to take a look at the mileage list. But this time, instead of looking for the minimum, we are going to look for the maximum. And for our speed list, it is going to go from 15 miles an hour up to 70 miles an hour, not including 70. And it is going to also calculate the mileage list here on this second line using list comprehension where we have our mileage calc formula where we input the speed and we're going to calculate the mileage for each of these speeds. And we can find the maximum value because we are looking for the optimal gas mileage. We can also graph this out and we can see within our graph, it goes from 15 over to 70. And we can see the optimal gas mileage up here that when we travel in the car for 42 miles per hour, that the gas mileage is 32 gallons of gas per mile. Thanks everybody for watching. I hope that this video was helpful. I have a few different resources here. The application question was taken from College Algebra by James Stewart, Lothar Redlin, and Salim Watson. Also, highly recommend Khan Academy for more videos on algebra. And if you found this video helpful, please feel free to like and subscribe. You can also connect with me on LinkedIn, Twitter, GitHub, and Odyssey. Thanks everybody for watching and happy coding.